This is part 63 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss logging to a file in ASP.NET Core using third-party logging provider nlog. With ASP.NET Core, we can use the following third-party logging providers. If we know how to work with one of the third-party logging providers, working with the others is not that different. So let's see how to log to a file using nlog. The first step is to install the nlog NuGet package. So let's flip over to Visual Studio and then within the Solution Explorer, right click on the project name and then select Manage NuGet Packages. In the window that appears, make sure you are on the Browse tab and then search for nlog.web.asp.net core NuGet package and then select the first option that we have here and as of this recording, the latest stable version is 4.8.2. For some reason, if you want to install a previous version, you can select that from the drop down list right here. I want to install the latest stable version, so I'm going to select that and click the install button. There we go. Nlog NuGet package is successfully installed. During the installation, you might have noticed a warning on the error list tab complaining that it has detected unreachable code on home controller. The reason we are getting this exception is because on line number 33 here, we are throwing an exception deliberately and as a result of that, the code below this line is unreachable and that's what this warning is complaining about. We can safely ignore that warning. Our NuGet package and log is successfully installed. We are only throwing this exception to demonstrate logging exceptions. So, after nlog NuGet package is installed, we need to configure it. For configuration information, nlog looks for a file with name nlog.config in the root project directory. So, I'm going to right click on the project name within Solution Explorer, add, we want to add a new item, search for a text file. I'm going to name this text file nlog.config. In the interest of time, I'm going to paste the minimum configuration that is required. With this configuration, we're basically telling nlog to write the log information to a file that is present in C demo logs folder and the file name is nlog-all dash today's date will be appended. If the file and folder does not exist, nlog will create them. And then we have a logging rule here. With this logging rule, we are basically enforcing the minimum level of logging that we need. We'll discuss this logging rule in detail in our next video when we discuss log level setting. If you need more information about this configuration information, then please refer to nlog official documentation on their GitHub page at this URL. I'll have this link available both in the description of this video and on my blog. At runtime, this configuration file nlog.config should be copied to the output directory. To enable that, right click on nlog.config file, select properties. In the properties window, set this property copy to output directory to copy if newer. Our next and final step is to add nlog as one of the logging providers. At the moment, I am on ASP.NET Core official GitHub page and looking at the code in create default builder method. We discussed what this method does in detail in our previous videos in this series. One of the things that this method does is it configures logging and we have the code that does that right here. Notice it's adding console debug and event source as the logging providers. In addition to these three built-in logging providers, we also want to add and log. So I'm going to copy these five lines of code and paste them in program.cs file in our project. In addition to console, debug and event source, we also want to add nlog as one of the logging providers. So on this variable logging, I'm going to call add nlog extension method. I'm going to press control period to bring in the required namespace. This extension method is in nlog.extensions.logging namespace. With all these changes in place, let's run our project in debug mode. There we go. 
we have our application up and running and we see the list of all employees. When we click on any of the view buttons, we have an exception. Let's continue on the exception. Notice we are redirected to our custom error view and if we take a look at the debug output window in Visual Studio, notice we have the exception log displayed right here. So in addition to sending this exception log to the debug output window destination, it should also be logged to a file by nlog. So if we take a look at C drive, notice within that we have demo logs folder and in this folder, we have a file with name nlog-all-todaysdate. And if I open this file, we have the exception log right here. At the moment, the size of this file is 3 kilobytes. Now, let's try to navigate to a URL that does not match with any route in our application. We are redirected to not found view and this should be logged to the file. Notice the size is still 3 kilobytes. Then if we open the file, we have our new log right here. At the moment, we are only logging messages that have the severity warning and higher. In our next video, we'll discuss how to control what is logged using log level configuration. So, four simple steps to use nlog to log to a file. First, install nlog NuGet package. For configuration information, nlog looks for a file with name nlog.config in the root project folder. So add a file with this name and include the required configuration that you see here. At runtime, this configuration file must be copied to the bin folder. So our obvious next step is to enable the copy operation. Finally, add nlog as one of the logging providers. There are several ways to do this. We did this in program.cs file by calling add and log extension method. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.